temperature rises outside. Uh, one of the things that it also did was rise in the fellowship hall uh, because the air conditioner quit working. Uh, so uh, we are pushing some air from here into there. Uh, so uh, we hope that by the time we get up back there that it'll be okay. Uh, but just to let you know ahead of time uh, that we'll be fine to even out the temperature a little bit. Also, uh, the phones, if you would uh, silence your phone, uh, put it on airplane mode, uh, pretend like you're traveling somewhere cooler, <laughs> and uh, that will help the, uh, the live stream. But we have work to do. We have the work of the people. It's called liturgy. And so let me invite you to stand as we uh, join together in the call to worship. We gather to seek God's face. Let our eyes see all that is right and good. We incline our ears to hear all God would teach. We seek to experience God's steadfast love. We are here to receive God's blessing. God is our refuge in the frightened world. God is near to all who call and seek. We come to praise God and receive the blessing. Let us join together in opening prayer. Oh God, there is beauty all around us from the work of your hands. You have surrounded us with people who care about us with the love of Christ. Point us beyond our cries and complaints, that we might realize our capacity to act in your name and for the sake of others. Our first hymn was number 98, To God Be Glory.
now a time of uh, prayer where we lift up our joys as well as our concerns. Uh, do we have some uh, some things to share with our congregation as well as with God? I need prayers for my brother, Mike, who's traveling to Georgia. My older brother, who lives in Georgia, passed away Thursday night. And he will be traveling to Georgia from Illinois, which is only six hours from where he lives to take care of his affairs, because he got the lucky job of being, had the power of attorney and everything to do all that. So he'll be traveling Tuesday to take care of that. And uh, then we'll meet up in October at my brother's house in Illinois to do some type of service for him. And and for you and your family and for the, uh, the sorrow as well as the, uh, the work ahead. Uh, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, yeah our prayers. And I brought a demo card. Chris Stinson was a Jubilee member and had lived here with Mom Dyson. And when Mom died, then Chris had to go to Red Passes. And then he lives in one of those apartments on the cliff. And he gets around on a bicycle wherever he goes. And occasionally I run into him, at the, uh, usually at Walmart, mm -hmm. which is where I saw him this week. That's what we see him. <laughs> About a year ago, he hadn't had gallbladder surgery. And then recently, I think as recently as a week or so ago, he pedaled his bike out to Walmart and his chest began to hurt and he couldn't get his breath. So he pedaled on to the clinic right down the road. And I said, oh my goodness, you're having a heart attack. I called an ambulance, took him to Lawrenceville. They kept him several days and did some tests and he hasn't heard from all that yet. But anyway, so I thought we could send him a get well card. Of course, he lives alone. He has no family there. So. For, for, uh, for healing. For healing. For the Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. prayers. Mom uh, has been diagnosed with COVID now. She was asymptomatic, but I haven't called and I need to call today to find out what's going on. But I can't see her right now. For your, for your mother, her continued health struggle. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. <laughs> and that's, that's a healthy boy. <laughs> and, uh, and how many great great grandchildren? Oh, Bob, there's about seven or eight. For expanding families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Since we mentioned it before, the Pam, my wife, has uh, had her second cataract surgery and everything went fine. And so, uh, she is, is, is been a blessing and a curse. She can now see me clearly. <laughs> so, Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah. our prayers. And we have a birthday today. Jimmy's turned 60 today, and Bonnie and Pat's anniversaries today. Happy birthday. He made it today. Should we sing happy anniversary? Happy Turning uh, prodigals. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. And also, Steve should 
Hey, I think brought a boat of fish. Is that what you said? Not a whole boat. One boat. We'll uh, we'll have to check those fish and see if they were bought at the Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Another product from home. <laughs> Any others? And go scale. Yeah, she said that she really missed the 106 degree temperature. <laughs> <laughs> it's so gone. cold up there. <laughs> 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 yeah. A preacher, I think most of the schools start this way. For the kids and the teachers <laughs> and whoever helps look out for their safety and care. Um, it's a new year. I can't believe they start school in the middle or beginning of August, not the middle. We'll, we'll have to have the parents keep down the celebration. <laughs> for, uh, for all the uh, that is before us with the, with the new school year. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Ronnie, who comes every once in a while, uh, he's having problems with his e-bike, and he said as soon as he gets that repaired, he'll be back with us. Right. So we were, we were very glad to have him back. Mm -hmm. A lot of products coming and going. Yes, but he does watch us on Facebook, so I just wanted to let him know that we're still because he made, he made that trip to Houston and he comes back safely. Let's take a moment and put ourselves in the presence of God. God of abundant love and grace, come to us now that we may feel the warmth of your embrace. Tell us once more the words of wisdom we need. Ease our fears as we remember that you are the Lord of life. Give us a purpose greater than we would dream of on our own. We come to be in community because we need each other as much as we need you. Help us to live in peace and mutual love. Resolve our conflicts and make us eager to listen. We lift up those who we know and those who we don't know. Your heart is big enough to embrace all people. Your strength is more than enough for those who are weak. Your grace is big enough to give new life. We pray in Jesus' name and using his words when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to hear from uh, one of my favorite uh, scriptures from Isaiah uh, to set this tone a little bit. Uh, this is uh, Lady Wisdom, who is in the marketplace among all the other people who are trying to, to sell their, their lifestyle uh, and trying to get our people's uh, the faithful's attention uh, to come to her. Uh, yes, our reading is Isaiah 55. One through five. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, 
my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of God for the people of God. And our psalm is 145. It's on page 857. And we'll use a different response from the one in the book. The words are the very last line of the psalm. And it goes like this. Let steadfast love. The Lord is good to all. His compassion is over all his creation. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. And your faithful ones shall bless you. Speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations.
Let's <laughs> appreciate it. And let's join together with Phil and my couple as we prepare to hear the gospel. chapter the 13th verse uh, I think you'll, uh, it'll sound familiar now when Jesus heard this he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself but when the crowd heard it they followed him on foot from the towns when he went ashore he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, "There is a, a, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowd away so that they may go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They want, need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. When he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowd and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 besides men women and children. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Some uh, 30 years ago, my son decided he wanted to go to the National Scout Jamboree held in near Washington, D.C. every year. And so I decided that I would volunteer to be a sub-camp chaplain and go with him. We as volunteers had to go early to prepare things, and so we were there setting up and getting things planned out uh, and getting ready for, the, for what was going to happen. And I remember looking out on an open, empty field. Nothing there. The next day, there were 40,000 people there. An entire city moved in in one day. They had it planned. They had done this before. They knew what they needed to do and how they needed to do it and how things needed to be set up. But even if it, since it was planned and, and done before, it still had glitches. You know, when you have that many young people the disposal system doesn't always work. And young boys tend to run into tick infested areas. They picked a hundred ticks off one boy <laughs> in the first aid station. And of course they had to have a few homesick children. On Sunday morning, they had a Protestant service, and I helped with it. I did a prayer. I didn't preach. I did a prayer. And there were 5,000 people sitting on the ground, listening and participating in the service. It was rather intimidating. 5,000. Does that sound familiar? That's who gathered front of Jesus. I think we, we, we make a mistake if we don't, we hear that glibly and think that, well, that's just a bunch of people. Think about how many people that is. That many people would fill this sanctuary 
50 times. That's a lot of people. The logistics would just be enormous. How could they all hear Jesus? But there they were. Jesus had gone off to a lonely place. He had wanted to spend time by himself. He wanted to spend time with just his disciples because they had some grieving to do. He had two major events right before this happened. One is John the Baptist, his cousin and compadre in ministry was put to death. His head chopped off. And then he went to his, his home synagogue in Nazareth and preached a sermon, preached this inaugural sermon, and they didn't want to listen. It struck him so hard that he ended up going to Capernaum. He moved because of the rejection of his hometown folks. He was hurting. He was grieving. And here come these people. 5,000 strong. Imagine who these people were. Some of them were people who had heard Jesus before and wanted to hear some more. He knew those were the words of life and they wanted more and they were hungry for it. And some of them were just doubters and skeptics and the curious. Some were rich and powerful. Some were probably poor. Some were hostile. All kinds of folks in that five thousand different levels of faith and of no faith. And they came to hear what Jesus had to say. He took compassion on him. Greater than his need, he saw the need of those people who were coming to him to listen. And he began to heal the sick and to teach them the words of life. They spent all day I can't imagine what y'all would do if I spent all day. And the disciples said, well, you know, we need to take care of Jesus. We need to take care of ourselves. And let's be practical. Let's send them away so they can go find food. Well, I got news for you. If they wanted to go find food, they would have. They would have got up and left. But they were hungrier for the word of God than they were for food. Now Jesus tells them the most impractical thing to do. He says, you feed them. What? We didn't plan for this. We can't run to the store. We got five loaves and Two fish. That's the sum total. That is not even enough for us, let alone this crowd. Jesus tells them, have them sit down in the wilderness. Can you remember a time in which we were hungry people in the wilderness? It was called the Exodus. The Hebrew people were following Moses into the wilderness and there was no food. And so they complained to Moses and Moses complains to God and God sends manna in the wilderness. Five loaves and two fish will be manna in the wilderness. Sit down. Recline. The word that he uses can be used for reclining like they do for a meal in someone's house because the, the, they didn't have seats. They didn't have a table like we didn't know it. They had a short table and people laid down to eat. Does that sound familiar? Remember the Lord's Supper? They came and laid down to eat with Jesus. He takes the loaves 
and he blesses him he breaks him and he gives that sounds a lot like the last supper only this time he stood the disciples eating them as they will at the last supper he said give him away and they began giving it away now how this worked I have no idea. If they'd had a TV camera there, I don't know what we would have seen. But somehow, it was more than enough. God is always more than enough. And there were 12 baskets left over. Twelve well, baskets that were empty when they started. Sounds like the twelve tribes of Israel, the Jewish faith, was kind of empty. But when Jesus started dealing with it, they were full. And they were full with broken pieces. Jesus had a habit of taking broken lives making them whole. There's enough for everyone. Just like there will be at the kingdom feast at the end of time. There's a place for everyone. There's enough for everybody to receive from Jesus' hand. We're going to take communion in a few minutes. Imagine those 5,000 people with us. I don't think we have enough bread. <laughs> but with God, there's always enough. Think of also the crowd, including all those Christians, the great crowd of witnesses. All the Christians who have come before, they're all here with us. And God is going to give us enough to feed our bodies, to feed our souls. God is always more than enough. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we feel God's presence and hear God's word, the wisdom that touches our hearts, we affirm our faith. And let us turn to number 881 in the back of the hymnal and put words to that affirmation. I invite you to stand so the world knows what you to stand for. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. of your grace and your love, the things that you give us that are more than enough. 
May we return part of that gift as we have more than enough to share. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another therefore let us confess our sin before God and one another join with me merciful God we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart we have failed to be an obedient church we have not done your will we have broken your law we have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Take a moment and take your individual petitions to God. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Join the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. We thanks to you, broke the bread, 
and gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on those gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other. One in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Just like Jesus took the bread and saw the wilderness, the manna in the wilderness, the feeding of the 5,000, the coming king, he broke the bread so that they could participate in it but also to remember his brokenness for our sins. We lift up the cup and ask God's blessing upon it that it become for us a source of healing and wholeness, a source of forgiveness, a cup of life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you just like the people so long ago came to Jesus to hear the words of life to feel your touch, to taste of your goodness, and to know that you are enough. Bless us this day in our meal together. Amen. For those who are assisting, please come and receive the worship. been 5,000 people before you, and now it's your turn. Please come.
closing hymn is number 664, uh, set forth by God's blessing. Let us stand. share God's bounty. We want to pass on God's steadfast love. Let's sing our blessing. Peace and serve the Lord. Amen.